I loves and assessors alike. As you know, we collect um, feedback from the laboratories after every assessment. And I would like to um, take this opportunity to read you one piece of feedback that we recently received and offer my own commentary and tips for both um, labs undergoing assessment and for our assessors that are watching. So here's the feedback that we got. Um, the initial interaction between the assessors and the staff seemed to be very stressful. Staff were complaining about feeling put on the spot and they felt that they were being assessed against the opinions of the assessor and not against the requirements. One assessor was spending a lot of time reviewing manuals and this put her behind schedule. They noticed that in a small facility with limited staff, this had a very big impact and put a lot of stress, both on the assessor and on the staff being, being assessed. They felt that too much time was spent um, going through the requirements one at a time, one by one by one, instead of a general discussion about process. They also noted that the second assessor on the team was very good at asking open-ended questions and that the team leader was excellent and they said that the second day was much better. So they're not really um, an unhappy facility but they do offer an opportunity for, for us to comment on this. First of all, I want to say that I don't know that every facility quite understands that the assessors are often just as nervous as the lab being assessed. And we are lab technologists and we tend to be very detail orientated. And we tend to like our manuals and our papers. So I understand why this assessor went to his or her comfort zone by starting her assessment by reviewing paper manuals. But I do have tips for how we can avoid this situation and, and do a much better job at asking open-handed questions. So let's say you're entering a laboratory and you're going to assess uh, hematology and you're, you have a string of questions in front of you, let's say about quality control. Don't read all of the requirements one by one by one and expect the staff to be able to just, just blurt out the answers. It's much better to have a general open-ended discussion. So ask the technologist that you're working with if they have any QC to run. If they don't have any QC to run, then you just have a general discussion and, and ask if you can mock up how the QC works. And then have a discussion along the way about all the various decision points. You're both going to be very, very comfortable with how to uh, address quality control in, in hematology without having to read the requirements one by one by one. So have a general discussion about the process. Observe the process if you can. And then you're gonna, gonna wanna go back and look at records. Now with QC, we'll look at about three months records of quality control. And I, I still wouldn't walk away from the technologist. I would sit down with the technologist and review the QC records. And then the last thing, the very, very last thing you do is take a look at the documented procedure for quality control. And when you look at that, you're checking to make sure that the procedure matches practice. And then, you can go back to your requirements and do your tick, tick, tick of compliance. That's a much better approach, and I, I hope um, every assessor can learn to, to do their assessments this way. I know it's a learned art, but generally, we want you to have a discussion. We want you to observe practice, look at records, and then the last thing you do is review the paper manuals. So I hope this little tip helps. I hope it clarifies for both the labs and the assessors what our expectations are, but we do understand that this is a skill we all need to practice. So thanks for your time. Bye.